As scientists spend more time, resources, and energy in exploring hidden stories and secrets of the Grand Canyon, as a result, some bizarre discoveries have been made recently. For example, scientists discovered very strong evidence that ancient Egyptians were living in the Grand Canyon. But how is this possible? But there's more. Suddenly, something very strange was discovered. Evidence that an ancient civilization in the Grand Canyon had a giant connection with Buddha. But the strangest of all is a discovery that created the theory of alien-like people, who were like human reptilians who ruled these territories for centuries. So, let's analyze all of these discoveries at the Grand Canyon. So, the Grand Canyon is a very mysterious place. It first appeared on maps in the late 19th century. One notable mapping expedition was led by Lord Lieutenant Joseph Ives in 1857 to 1858. His exploration resulted in the first detailed map of the Grand Canyon region. However, it is important to note that Native American tribes, including the Havasupi, Hopai, and Navajo, had been long aware of the Grand Canyon's existence and had lived in the area for centuries before it appeared on Western maps. Is it possible that ancient Egyptians ventured across the vast Pacific Ocean and roamed the American Southwest many centuries ago? This intriguing notion emerged in the early 1900s when two archaeologists, supported by the Smithsonian Institute, put forward a bold claim. They described a vibrant civilization hidden within a network of caves, painstakingly chiseled into a secluded area of the majestic Grand Canyon. What exactly did these archaeologists uncover during their expedition, and what evidence did they bring back to support their extraordinary hypothesis? In a captivating news article featured prominently on the front page of the Arizona Gazette on April 5, 1909, a fascinating tale unfolded. The story detailed the remarkable unearthing of a collection of peculiar caves and intriguing artifacts nestled within the Marble Canyon area of the Grand Canyon. According to the report, it was Professor S. A. Jordan and G. E. Kincaid, archaeologists who received financial support from the esteemed Smithsonian Institution, who were credited with this extraordinary discovery. The article emphasized the significant findings that provided compelling evidence pointing towards an oriental lineage for the enigmatic civilization that once inhabited the mysterious cavern. These remarkable caves, meticulously carved by human hands into solid rock, appeared to be associated with ancient Egypt, possibly tracing back to the time of Ramesses. If the archaeologists' theories prove accurate through the translation of hieroglyphic tablets discovered, it could potentially unravel the long-standing mystery surrounding the prehistoric peoples of North America, shedding light on their ancient customs, origins, and migrations. This groundbreaking connection between Egypt, the Nile, and the distant regions of Arizona and the Colorado River would establish a historical link stretching back to an era that surpasses even the most extravagant imagination of fiction writers. Further along in the article, an intriguing depiction emerges of an idol seated in a cross-legged position, bearing a striking resemblance to the Buddha. Additionally, a sizable tomb is mentioned, housing mummified human remains. This extraordinary juxtaposition paints a vivid picture, blending elements from both Egyptian and East Asian cultures, creating a captivating fusion of influences. Despite the treacherous nature of the journey, both private collectors and scholars dared to venture into the remote reaches of the Grand Canyon. Undeterred by the challenges, they embarked on expeditions to explore the site where Kincaid made his remarkable discovery. Located approximately 42 miles from El Tovier Crystal Canyon, the entrance to the cavern was described in the Arizona Gazette article as an astonishing 1,500 feet below, nestled on the sheer face of a cliff. The perilous conditions did not deter these intrepid explorers from pursuing their quest for knowledge and uncovering the secrets hidden within the depths of the canyon. Traversing the rugged terrain of the Grand Canyon is undoubtedly challenging, but with modern advancements, it's a feat that could be accomplished today. However, amidst various conspiracy theories, John Rhodes alleges having precise knowledge of the cavern's whereabouts. According to his claims, the entrance to the cavern is presently safeguarded by a solitary soldier equipped with an M16 rifle, and these subterranean chambers purportedly serve as a clandestine museum for an elusive group of influential individuals. Adding an extra layer of peculiarity, David Icke, in his book The Biggest Secret, published in 1999, draws a connection between Kincaid's discovery in the Grand Canyon and a perplexing narrative involving reptilian rulers. Such claims introduce a realm of the bizarre and captivating to the already mysterious account of Kincaid's findings. There is no existing documentation within the Smithsonian's Department of Anthropology to confirm the presence of Kincaid or Professor Jordan in their records. 
Similarly, there is no trace in the Smithsonian's archives regarding any paperwork or records pertaining to the artifacts supposedly collected during their expedition. In response to inquiries regarding Kincaid's assertions, a representative from the Smithsonian Institute stated unequivocally, Let me clarify the matter at the outset. No Egyptian artifacts have ever been discovered in either North or South America. Consequently, I can affirm that the Smithsonian Institute has never participated in or been associated with any excavations of that nature. Conspiracy theories claim that the Smithsonian Institute went to extreme lengths, including the destruction of artifacts, in order to preserve a specific historical narrative. These proponents of the theory point to the existence of artificially constructed mounds, with plaster walls scattered across the American Midwest as evidence. They also highlight a collection of coffins crafted through fire etching techniques, discovered in Alabama back in 1892. These coffins were allegedly handed over to the Smithsonian Institution but mysteriously vanished in the years that followed, fueling speculations of deliberate concealment. Upon their return, Kincaid and Jordan failed to produce any physical artifacts or photographic evidence of their reported discoveries, leaving the article published in the Arizona Gazette as the sole piece of documentation regarding their expedition. It's interesting to point out that the Grand Canyon is a far more mysterious place than scientists ever thought. And every day, gradually new expeditions and exploration projects reveal new fascinating historical facts that we never knew. For example, the formation of the Grand Canyon began around 6 million years ago, but the region's geological history extends back hundreds of millions of years. Over this vast timescale, the climate and environmental conditions of the area have undergone significant changes. There was a time when the Grand Canyon and this location supported lush vegetation, including rainforests. Geological evidence such as fossilized plants and animal remains found in the area, can provide insights into the past's beautiful ecosystems of the Grand Canyon. And it's fascinating to note that numerous attractions within the park have Egyptian-inspired names. You'll come across the Tower of Set, Tower of Ra, Horus Temple, Osiris Temple, and Isis Temple, along with various spots in Haunted Canyon, such as Cheops Pyramid, the Buddha Cloister, Buddha Temple, Manu Temple, and Shiva Temple. Interestingly enough, the region where the rumored hidden city is said to be situated is actually inaccessible to the general public, as it falls within restricted government-owned land. The story was quickly forgotten, but it resurfaced in 1962 with the release of the book Arizona Cavalcade. This collection of newspaper articles chronicling the history of Arizona brought the tale back into the spotlight. One particular account that caught people's interest was the mention of an Egyptian civilization in the Grand Canyon. David Hatcher Childress took note of this intriguing story and included it in his 1992 book, Lost Cities of North and Central America. Childress dedicated his research to exploring the potential presence of old world influences within American archaeological sites. As he delved into his studies, one particular account caught his attention and left him utterly astonished. It was the story of an Egyptian cave found within the Grand Canyon. Furthermore, he was presented with a map showcasing a series of cave formations that surprisingly carried Egyptian names. Childress found the story about an Egyptian cave in America too incredible to be true, and it's hard to blame him. Filled with curiosity, he took the initiative to reach out to both the Smithsonian and the Grand Canyon National Park for further information. However, to his surprise, the Smithsonian denied any knowledge of Jordan and Kincaid, the alleged discoveries of the cave. Childress became convinced that there was a deliberate cover-up taking place. According to him, the area containing the Egyptian and Hindu place names had become off-limits, with strict restrictions on access. Despite the Smithsonian's denial of events that allegedly took place in 1909, Childress's account of the Egyptian cave stirred up quite a commotion. As more individuals embraced the idea of the spiritual significance attributed to the Egyptians, a growing number of people started perceiving the Grand Canyon as a profound manifestation of nature's immense power and the passage of time. Intricate theories emerged regarding the existence and significance of the Egyptian cave within the canyon. Some proponents argued that the presence of Egyptian names itself indicated the existence of an ancient civilization residing in the depths of the Grand Canyon. Intrigued by these theories, numerous groups ventured to the canyon with the specific intention of locating this fabled cave. Questions lingered. Was it truly situated approximately 7 kilometers upstream from El Tovio Crystal Canyon? And, most importantly, where precisely could it be found? However, Kincaid had this to say about the location. Some 42 miles up the river from El Tovo Crystal Canyon, I saw on the east wall stains in the sedimentary formation 
about 2,000 feet above the riverbed. There was no trail to this point, but I finally reached it with great difficulty. Above a shelf, which hid it from view from the river, was the mouth of the cave. Other crucial questions, other crucial questions emerge. Wouldn't the account of the Egyptian cave have been significant news for Arizona and the entire world? It's rather perplexing that there is no mention of a Smithsonian expedition to Arizona in any newspaper. In fact, one would expect a sensational headline proclaiming something like, Egyptians once inhabited Arizona. The truth is that the story published in the Gazette received almost no attention from other newspapers within the state of Arizona. Out of more than a dozen newspapers in 1909, only the Jerome Mining News saw fit to republish the story. In the weeks that followed the initial publication of the Egyptian cave story, the Gazette refrained from providing any further updates or commentary on the matter. As time passed, the story gradually faded away, and after a year had elapsed, it had completely vanished from public discourse. Consequently, there was no real incentive for other newspapers to discuss or analyze it. Readers had become accustomed to these types of stories, recognizing them as newspaper hoaxes that had a long-standing tradition in the United States. For instance, in the early 19th century, a Boston newspaper concocted a fictional tale about a discovered cave beneath downtown Boston. Readers no longer felt the need to label such stories as hoaxes, since it was widely understood that their purpose was to spark imagination rather than present factual accounts. That's it for today. Subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell.